everyone. Today we are talking about when children and babies bump their heads and when and if you need to worry and what you need to do. My name is Sarah Hunstead. I am a paediatric nurse, mum of two and author of A Life, A Finger, A Pee, Up A Nose, A Practical Guide to Baby and Child First Aid. And I am also uh, the founder of CPR Kids. And at CPR Kids, what we do is that we empower parents and families with the life-saving skills of baby and child first aid and recognition of the sick child. And before we go any further yet this morning, what I would love to do is that if there is anybody who you think will benefit from knowing this information just tag them down below and if you could give me a thumbs up or a wave while we are live here on Facebook at the moment so that I can just tell that all of the technology is working as it should that would be fantastic if there's any issues um, comment below but the other thing we will do is we will also post this uh, on uh, the baby to toddler show and the CPR kids pages for you to watch later as well so one thing we need to remember is that children and babies, particularly when they are learning how to cruise and to walk, they will bump their heads all the time. I can actually hear you all saying, yep, been there, done that for those of you who've got the um, older little ones. And certainly I have been there with my two girls as well. And often they'll end up with that nice big egg on their head. Now, you know what I mean by that nice big egg, the nice big bump and bruise there that can often look absolutely terrible. But how do you know if it is something that is serious or not? That's what we're here to do today. So we are going to talk about prevention, recognition and response to head injuries in babies and children. So generally head injuries are classified as either mild, moderate or severe. For just, you know, one of those little head bumps where your child's fine afterwards, you can treat that at home, that's no problem. But certainly a moderate or severe head bump or injury needs to be seen medically an ambulance needs to be called and i'll go through that what those signs and symptoms are so that you know where and when that you need to seek help but the one thing that i do want you to do is please 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 trust your gut if your instinct says that something is not right even though it doesn't fit into the categories that i'm talking about today you take your child to seek medical help. We don't muck around with head injuries, okay? Always trust your gut, really, really important. So let's start with prevention. Now, when it comes to prevention, we don't want to wrap our kids up in cotton wool. As tempting as it is to stick them in a bubble until they're 20, you know, no, we can't do that. We need to let them get out and explore the world. They need to climb trees. They need to ride their scooters hurtling down a hill and, you know, enjoy that feeling. But we need to be able to minimize risk and that's how prevention so using things like helmets and things like that which i'll go into but we need our kids to get out there and explore the world but we need to know how to patch them up afterwards if something does go wrong so you can't wrap them up in cotton wool we've got to let them get out there but we can minimize risk so one of the first things that you can do for prevention is appropriate equipment for your kids when they're on their wheels. We have a saying in our house, no helmet, no wheels. That's simple. And you might be thinking to yourself, oh, I've got an 18 month old. I don't need to, you know, put a helmet on them. If they're just on their scooter, they can't go that fast. Please, if your child is able to go on a scooter, they need a helmet on their head even on the balance bikes, all of that kind of stuff, please, they are never too young to be wearing a helmet if they are able to go on it. They need something on their heads. I've seen toddlers pick up massive speed and fall off pretty fast. But even though, you know, obviously that's something that's an issue, even if they just fall off and they hit their heads, that's of concern. Having that protective helmet on is really important. No helmet no wheels that simple the other thing that is preventative is that always use the straps 
Use the straps on the pram. Use the straps on the high chair. Use the straps on the changing table. Because kids fall off things, okay? One of the number one causes of injuries in children under the age of five are falls, particularly in babies, falls. And so one of the most common things that we see in babies are falls off the bed and falls off the change table because so quickly developmentally they change where, you know, yesterday they didn't know how to roll, but they learned today while they were on the change table. So it's really, really important that we are thinking about those things. If there are straps available, use them. Don't ever leave them on the, on the, on the change table, on the bed when they can start to move one hand on them. Change them on the floor if you need to, okay? If you're able to with your body. Now, that's one thing as well. Even thinking about things, you know, like the little trike bikes that you can push them in. So it's not just restricted to the pram and things like that. And so that's really important. So we don't wrap them up in cotton wool, but we can do things to help prevent head injuries. Now, what about recognizing head injuries? Now, often when we think of it, we think of that nice big egg that happens here. So what, what's the usual thing that happens is that a child might fall over. So they're cruising along, they're holding onto something, they wobble, they fall over, and they smack their head on the floorboards, okay? They cry straight away. That is awesome, okay? Crying straight away is exactly what we want. The louder they cry, the happier we are because it means they haven't had a loss of consciousness. They, you know, if they're screaming and they're angry about it, fabulous. That's exactly what we want. So a huge cry, good. So we expect them to cry straight away. We then expect them to need a cuddle and then, you know, they might need on their bump on their head, they might need a little cold pack. If they let you, it's not essential if they won't let you, but if they would like it on there, it can help with the pain relief. And you know what? Then they're busy. They want to keep going with what they're doing. They don't have time for that. They've got to go play with their trains or they've got some dirt to, you know, dig in the garden or something like that. They are busy. So off they go. And it's like it never happened. That's what we want, okay? That is really comforting to us. So what we expect with a mild head injury is, so we're talking a mild head injury here, okay? We expect them to be maybe cranky at first. They might be a little bit dazed briefly at the very beginning, but certainly no loss of consciousness at all, okay? They might have had a bit of a vomit if they were crying and they were really upset, but they seem completely back to normal now, okay? And probably, you know, the upset that made them, you know, vomit. You might have one of those kids who vomits every time they cry, okay? Um, they might have a bump to their head. So it can be a nice big bump there. And when you feel it, when you feel this bump, what it should feel like is reasonably firm, a bit like an avocado that is you know, nice for salad, a nice good you know, salad or on your sandwich, but not ready for guacamole. Okay. If it feels squishy, like an avocado that you go, oh, yep, no, not putting that in my salad, that the only thing that can do is be mushed up for guacamole because it's really quite squishy. That's really concerning. That could mean that there may be a fracture or significant bleeding underneath there. We call it a boggy swelling. That's very concerning, okay? So the lump itself should feel reasonably firm, okay? And what else? They should just be back to normal, okay? Sometimes what can happen when your child has a head injury is that they may fall into something and the impact can split the skin. So I've got my friend here to help me. Who have I got? This is Malcolm. Okay. So Malcolm here, impact zones on kids, because let's face it, their heads are massive. Really, they are. Their heads are a third the size of their body. Like they're absolutely huge. Okay. And so they have massive foreheads. So big impact zone is often along here. Their chin is another impact zone as well. 
and often the big back of their head here that is another big impact zone so often when we see our kids hit their heads these are the parts that they will injure so sometimes what will happen is that the skin can split on impact and they'll end up with a laceration there so what you're going to do is you are going to get something clean and dry and particularly if you've got a kid who hates the sight of blood using something that's red um, to help disguise the blood will help them be calm as well, which is a good thing. So we are going to put firm, direct pressure directly over the top of the wound. And trust me, heads bleed and bleed and bleed. And then they bleed a bit more. OK, they are highly, highly vascular. So they bleed and bleed and bleed. So firm, direct pressure over the top of the wound with something clean and dry like a tea towel or if you've got your first aid kit there then you can grab something out of that over the top for a minimum yes you can see you all rolling your eyes at the moment minimum of 10 minutes okay set a timer on your phone get bluey on the ipad and just go ahead and do this if you've got a child who's protesting Get them to help you, okay? Get them to help put the pressure on as well. It can be a really good distraction tool to be able to do that. And then what we do after the 10 minutes, we'll have a look. If you go, that's awful, that's massive, you know what? You probably need to get medical help, okay? So if the wound is large, if it is gaping, if it is continuing to bleed, if you can see fat, muscle, bone, if you look at that and go, whoa, Okay, then you know what? You need medical help. Okay, so don't give your child anything to eat or drink because if they need stitches, the hospital might give them some laughing gas to help with that. Um, but hopefully, it would just be able to have some glue. But that's something that the doctor at the hospital or the nurse practitioner at the hospital will decide. Okay, so they'll have a look at that. If you look at it and go, oh, that's, that's actually fine. The, um, it's really quite little um, and it, it looks good. You know what? It probably is. All right. You might want to put some of those little steri strips over the top or just a Band-Aid. It's no longer bleeding. Um, just sometimes what can happen is the wound is reasonably small, but it just bled a lot. OK, you might look at it and go, geez, I can't believe it had that much blood for such a teeny weeny little cut. Heads bleed and bleed and bleed. So. That's what you're going to do if there is any bleeding involved as well. If it is just a bump to the head, so we've got that nice little egg there, you can put a cool face washer over the top. You can use a cold pack, but not directly on the skin. Make sure it's wrapped in a tea towel if your child will tolerate it. If they don't want it, don't worry too much. OK, so it's just simply for pain relief. If they want to get on with what they're doing, that's no problem. OK. So these were the signs and symptoms of a mild head injury. But even if the head injury is just mild, what I want you to do is keep your spidey sense on. You're going to be watching them even up over the next 24, 48 hours for any of the other symptoms that I am talking about, because sometimes the symptoms of a moderate head injury may actually come up later. So 24, 48 hours later. So that's why it's really important that we are aware of these signs and symptoms, which I will go into in just a moment. And I'm going to tell you a story too. Now, remember, this isn't to scare you guys. This is just to empower you with the knowledge that you go, you know what, I've got this. I know what to look for. And the majority of head injuries of kids are actually mild. OK, they actually are. It's a rite of passage of childhood. But sometimes we need to be aware. Well, we do need to be aware, not sometimes, all the time, because things can happen. A friend of mine, her daughter, was hugged by one of her friends, but it knocked her off her feet and she actually fell backwards just from standing height onto the driveway, which is bricks. And her mum, she knew what to look for. She was actually a nurse, so that was a good thing. Uh, her daughter cried straight away, didn't have a loss of consciousness, but wasn't quite right for the next little while. Later on, hours later, she had a vomit. My friend went, OK, this could be a head injury. This could be just that, you know, she's starting to get gastro. Let's wait and see. 
She noticed that her child was more tired than usual and that she had another big vomit. This was red flags. So she took her child to the hospital, okay, and she was watched for a while, but she continued to get worse over time, almost a full day later. She actually had a small bleed in, um, in her head uh, from this head injury, and it was picked up because mum knew the signs and symptoms to look up for. She actually ended up having an operation to drain this, um, to drain the collection of blood, and she's absolutely fine, completely fine. And But the good thing is, is that mum knew what to look for. That's why it's empowering to know this. It's not about scaring you, okay? So what are these signs and symptoms, okay? So number one, if your child has a loss of consciousness, you are calling an ambulance, no matter how brief that loss of consciousness is. So I'm talking knocked out. They must go to hospital. You are calling an ambulance. Straight up. Okay. If they are drowsy after bumping their head, but it's not their normal sleep time. So often what can happen is this happens before bed because they're uh, crazy. It's witching hour. And you need to, you know, um, you know, pop them in bed because you've kept them up for a little bit just to make sure they're okay. Everything seems completely normal. But now it's 8.30 and their bedtime is usually, you know, 7 o'clock. Of course, they're going to be tired. That's different. But you've got to go in and check on them regularly to make sure that they're rousing well. Okay. But... If they are drowsy, it is not their normal sleep time, or you think, no, this is beyond just being a bit tired, drowsy, they need to go to hospital, okay? If they didn't cry straight away, and that goes into the loss of consciousness. Um, so it's a little red flag that may not mean hospital, it may be that you witnessed this, that they were just stunned for a sec and then let out a big cry, that's probably okay. But if we're talking that they lost consciousness, they didn't cry, they were out for a while, then yes, ambulance. So if they're confused afterwards, okay? So if they, um, you know, it, and all this is developmental as well, sometimes it can be really hard to pick confusion in a one-year-old, but their behavior is not right, okay? So with kids, the biggest big red flag, and I worked in an emergency department for 15 years, and that red flag that I was always looking for when I was at triage would be, is their behavior different? And if their parents came in and said, they're not acting normal, it is different to normal, they are not their normal selves, that was a big red flag that something wasn't right. So you're looking for that abnormal behavior. If it is not right, if it's different to usual, if you've got that child who's a cyclone and they are running around like a, you know, a chook with a head cut off normally, but after their head injury, they're quiet, Kind of just sitting there it's just not normal for them that is a red flag okay if they have any visual disturbance that's another red flag or if they're dizzy geez easy to tell if they're seven and they're saying i can't see properly but what happens if they're one they can't tell you that their vision isn't quite right what you may notice is that they may be crawling strangely or they may not be able to walk like they normally do with the dizziness, or you may find that they're reaching for toys, but they're not able to play with them like they normally do. That can indicate some dizziness or visual disturbance. So that's an important thing to look for. If you find that they've got any limb weakness, and certainly um, if they're favoring one arm to, to play with toys, look at how they're playing, observe them for a little bit. Is it the way they usually do, or is it different to normal? And of course, if they have a seizure, ambulance triple zero immediately okay or whatever in your country that is also if they have more than one vomit that is a red flag and they need medical attention so more than one vomit if the wound is really large or the swelling the egg on their head is massive and you're like oh geez i'm not comfortable with this that's just beyond anything absolutely you need medical help remember if you're in doubt seek medical help and importantly if they have a severe headache that an older child may be able to tell you that's not being relieved by paracetamol for example or 
if they have fallen asleep and you are having difficulty rousing them, then we need an ambulance immediately. So the other thing too is looking at the mechanism of the injury. And what we mean by mechanism is how it happened. Did they fall from a big height? So say more than a meter, because remember, what might not be big for us could be three times a one-year-old's height. So for example, if we fell off a chair, you know, yes, of course we can end up with a head injury, but it may not, you know, seem like a big height. But for a one-year-old, that could be double their height because they're much smaller than us. So we need to be thinking about that. Or was it at high speed as well? So even if they seem, you know, okay, think about the mechanism, high speed, high height, those sorts of things, they need to be checked really important. So I want you to start thinking of any questions that you have. If you've got any questions, start typing them in the comments below while we're live here on Facebook. And what I'm going to do is just do a recap now of the important points and then we'll go into questions. So we need to remember that head injuries are common. They are a rite of passage of childhood and that we can't wrap our kids up in cotton wool. They need to get out and explore the world, but we need to know the signs and symptoms to look out for. And we can minimize head injury risk by always using the straps on things, okay? Like the pram, the high chair, the changing table, all of that kind of stuff. Can we change them on the floor if your body is able to do that? Also, no helmet, no wheels, ever. If they are on wheels, scooters, bikes, balance bikes, all of that, they have a helmet on their heads every single time. Okay. And let's think about recognition. What do we expect? We expect them to hit their head, end up with a bit of a bump, cry immediately, need a cuddle, and then they are completely back to normal like it never even happened. That's good. Okay. But we're still going to watch them with our little spidey sense and look for the red flags. If, you know, for example, they have one vomit, it's probably okay. If they have that bruising and lump that's relatively firm to touch, good, okay. So if as well that we're there back to normal, maybe a bit of a cool compress over the top, okay, fantastic. Let's just watch them. Mild head injury. But if they have a moderate to severe head injury or show any of these signs at any time, you are getting urgent medical attention for your child. So if they have a loss of consciousness, no matter how brief, that is an ambulance to the hospital. If they are drowsy, but it's not their normal sleep time. If they have, you know, going in with that no immediate cry, they are dazed and confused, visual disturbances or dizzy, we need immediate medical help for them. If they have any limb weakness, if they have a seizure, for example, they have more than one vomit. If they have um, a severe headache, or especially if you have any difficulty rousing them for sleep, then absolutely ambulance. But my biggest thing that I want you to take away from here is trust your gut. If they have strange behavior or abnormal behavior, it is different to usual. I want you to act on that and seek medical help. It's really important. So let's get into the questions now. Here we go. Okay. So Lydia has asked if they bump their head and have a blood nose, but they're otherwise well, should you just wait and watch? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the other things that we get concerned about is they have blood or clear fluid coming out of their ears. That can mean um, that they have internal head injury. It can be the clear or straw colored fluid that may come out of the ear can be um, their cerebral spinal fluid. That is a severe via head injury and ambulance immediately. Um, then if blood is coming out of the ears, absolutely ambulance immediately. But sometimes they fall and they hit their nose and they may have a bit of a blood nose. If everything else is fine, then absolutely treat the blood nose first aid and then wait and watch. But if they have any of the other symptoms as well, you are seeking immediate medical attention. And if your gut says that it's not right, and of course, seek medical attention. Thank you for your question, Lydia. I'm just going to jump into my uh, questions here at the moment. So I'm just having a look now 
uh, to see if you what else you guys are asking so let's have a look okay so Michael has asked a question as well so if an injury happens around bedtime and they go to sleep what should we be looking for while they're sleeping fantastic okay good so Michael what you're going to be doing is you're going to go in um, initially probably every 15 minutes or so so you've kept them up you've made sure you're comfortable that they're fine put them to bed go in and you're going to rouse them every 15 minutes until you go to bed what we expect is we want them to be cranky with you we want them to wake up and you know and then let them go back to sleep so we're looking that they're able to be roused that's what we're looking for obviously we're looking to check if they've had a vomit or anything like that too but that's what we want to do and by the time you go to bed if you go nah I'm not comfortable with this you take them and you go and get some medical help if you go you know yep they've woken up really well every time I'm not worried okay good so trust your instinct with that now Ash has also asked a question while waiting for the ambos what should a parent be doing fantastic so if they are unconscious but are still breathing so we want you to go through doctors ABCD and if you don't know what that is then you need to either watch our video but you need to go and do a pediatric first aid course so these are the steps to ascertaining whether or not needs somebody needs CPR and then actually doing it so if we find that they are unconscious but breathing normally and that can often happen with head injury we want to roll them on their side into the recovery position we're going to stay with them and we're going to watch them really carefully and if it, your child is conscious um, but then what we can do is we can just settle them hold them in our arms follow the instructions uh, from the operator and don't hang up they'll keep you on the line and tell you what to do so unconscious with normal breathing on their side in the recovery position otherwise if they are conscious while you are um, waiting for the ambulance keeping them settled and comfortable in your arms if possible or if they're an older child have them on their side and laying there what we don't want is a child fighting against you and getting cranky it's about keeping them calm and still and so often when you do an adult first aid course they'll teach you um, you know to immobilize their neck just in case there is a neck injury with this head injury and so on now what we do know with kids is that it's about keeping them calm and still and often that is sitting with a parent or a caregiver often we will have them simply leaning like this okay and that's keeping them nice and calm and still okay so that's what we're doing that's the aim of it okay so any other questions thank you Ash that was another great question uh, just looking to see if we have any more questions at all I'm not sure that we do right now hopefully that means that we've covered all of the important points and remember we love bringing you these Facebook lives please comment below what you want us to talk about okay when it comes to pediatric health okay particularly the first aid that's what we want to do we want good evidence-based information for you really important so thank you very much everyone we will see you again same time same place and if you haven't done a pediatric first aid course jump over to the baby to toddler show page we've got an online course there or jump over to CPR kids and if we're not in your area there are lots of fantastic pediatric first aid providers out there we will help you find one that is okay thanks a lot everyone we will see you soon I'll see you next week bye, -bye.